In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the MPV and IRR functions from the module NumPy Financial. Now, NumPy Financial used to be part of the full NumPy package, but at version 1.17, it was split out and it's now its own self-contained module with a handful of financial functions that essentially work the same way as their counterparts in Excel. In some cases, we can consider them, I guess, a little bit better than the Excel functions. So if you don't already have NumPy Financial installed, uh, you can run this code right in the notebook if you start with the exclamation point and it will install. Otherwise, you can run it without the exclamation point from the command line. Now, once you get it installed, we'll go ahead and import it and then check the version. Okay, so as of this video, it's the current version and uh, it's just in the first release. I expect that they will be making modification to this and uh, improving the module as time goes on. All right, I should also mention that I will make this notebook available for download from a link in the description of the video. First thing I guess we should do is maybe take a look at the functions in the module. Okay, so as mentioned, it's not a very big library, all right, but some of the most common financial functions that people uh, tend to use over and over again. All right, so essentially, yep, they work just like spreadsheet functions. All right, so we're going to be looking at MPV and IRR, all right, and they're pretty closely related, actually. All right, so the first thing I guess I will do is get a help on MPV, all right, and these functions are very well documented. Okay, so yes, it, re it returns the net present value of some kind of capital investment project. And uh, one place where I think it's superior to the Excel equivalent is that this function assumes the first cash flow in your array or list of values. It doesn't have to be an array, all right? But it, it assumes that occurs at time period zero, all right? In Excel, that first value is assumed to occur at time period one. All right, so it just makes the Excel function a little bit more cumbersome to use. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and value a project. I have a scenario set up down here. So uh, we are have a five-year project, and our initial cash outlay is 425, our cost of capital 12, and uh, the annual inflow, net inflow here, all right? So I'm just gonna sort of net the flows. You could have an inflow and an outflow and then net them later, I guess, if you want. But here I've netted them and uh, we're gonna get that level amount of inflows over the next five years. Sometimes projects don't have level inflows. Sometimes they require an additional investment later on. And sometimes the cash flows are a little bit more lumpy. All right, but this should be good enough to show you how this function works. All right, so we want to know what is the net present value of this project. All right, and essentially if the net present value comes out as positive, it means we're earning in excess of that 12% required rate of return. All right, if it were zero, it would mean we were earning exactly that 12% rate of return. All right, and if it's negative, it means we're not earning that. Okay, so I will just call that MPV function and I will give it our required rate of return and our list of cash flows. Okay, and so just like that, we find out that this project is worth uh, more than zero, so we're earning in excess of 12% on it. All right, and if we want to format it a little bit more nicely, I'll stick it in an F string here, and we'll give it a dollar sign. Okay, so there it is, 115, 7, 16, 43. Okay, so this nicely boils it down into a single number. If you want, right, you could manually do this, right? So this is kind of the benefit of the MPV function is that you don't have to do this, all right? But let me set a variable here just so we can see mechanically what's going on inside the function. Okay, so instead of getting one number, I'm gonna look at all of the numbers as they get discounted each year, all right? So I'm gonna take this list 
and I'm gonna add to it, all right, the cash flow from a specific year, all right, and then I'm gonna divide that by the rate raised to the year. Okay, once all that is done, I will just get my list. Okay, so we can see the discounted cash flows uh, for the individual years here. All right, and then, yep, if I sum this up, I should get the same answer as I got for MPV. All right, and there it is. Okay, IRR is similarly easy to use. All right, and what the IRR is, is it's the rate of return that would cause that MPV to be zero. All right, so then to use this, I'm just gonna call IRR, and uh, all I need to do is pass in my cash flows here. Okay, so IRR about 22.5%. All right, and then if I just save that into a variable, I can recall MPV and prove that the IRR is the rate of return where you get an MPV of zero. Okay, so not exactly zero here, all right, but uh, a very close to it, right? A, uh, a two with nine decimal places in front of it, so very close to zero there. Okay, so hopefully that helps you get started with uh, MPV and IRR functions in the NumPy financial module.